Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Wesley Lowry has extensively covered deadly shootings by police officers and the Black Lives Matter movement. Lowry is now a correspondent for 60 and 6, lucky for them, which features 60 minute style storytelling in six minute episodes. It premieres on the streaming app Quibi this Sunday. 60 and 6 is produced by CBS News, which is part of Viacom CBS, which, by the way, is an investor in Quibi. Lowry has been in Minneapolis covering the death of George Floyd. In the first episode, he speaks with Floyd's brother. And you've heard from some of these families. Eric Garner's mother's here. She's here. She's here. Loving mom, I can tell. She reminded me of my mother. You know, when I was looking at her talking to her, I was hurt just sitting there talking to her. I didn't want to talk to her because I, I knew her son passed away saying, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. My brother passed away the same way. I didn't want that. Nobody should have to endure that. It's not right. It's not right. Boy, Wesley Lowry joins us now from Minneapolis. Wesley Lowry, it's so good to see you. May I just say your Atlantic piece, the breaking point is must, must, must read. I'm really glad to talk to you today because you've been covering the Black Lives Movement matter for 10 years. And unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, you know this subject very, very well. Everybody keeps saying that this is different. Does it feel different to you with all that you know? Of course. Well, thanks so much for having me this morning. And, and what a heartbreaking clip and that the whole interview uh, uh, with George Floyd's brother was just uh, miserable um, in, in the way you could feel and hear his pain about everything that was going on. This does feel different. This moment does feel different. And I, I lay out in this article that uh, we published at The Atlantic yesterday, um, and it's one of the things we talk about in the segments um, on 60 and 6 for Quibi, is that in this moment, uh, you have what is just the latest in a series of these videos. We've seen so many of them, right? Going back years, Walter Scott, Tamir Rice, Philando Castile, you know, we all know the names, Sandra Bland. And two different things were happening. Black people were getting exhausted watching these videos. Another one, and another one, and another one. And meanwhile, white Americans were saying, maybe this isn't just one bad police officer. Maybe this isn't just one isolated incident. And so what we saw was you had two different groups of people reaching their breaking point. Black Americans who were saying, I can't deal with this anymore. And white Americans who were saying, we have to deal with this. We're in a moment right now where it's clear, when you go out to these demonstrations, right? I've been here in Minneapolis. I was back home in D.C. covering protests for a bit. I've got colleagues across, we all have colleagues across the country. When you look at the people who are in the streets, it's a really diverse set of folks in a way that's very different yes. than 2014 and 15 and 16, because everyone is like, wait a second, we gotta, we, no one wants to watch another one of these videos. Yeah, and the young people are talking to their parents, too, in a way that I've never heard before, Wesley. It does seem Certainly. like the perfect storm of pain. It, it really does feel like that. What specifically did you learn in Minneapolis while you were there on the ground? Certainly. I mean, so Minneapolis is a fascinating city because Minneapolis is, has been on the front lines of this fight and this movement as much as any other place. People forget that uh, there was a police shooting of a young black man named Jamar Clark in 2015, and there was massive protest here in Minneapolis as a result of that. Uh, you, you push forward, and you have Philando Castile, who's killed kind of in suburban Minneapolis, one of the videos and one of the shootings that everyone knows about, right? And so this isn't the first time this city has been in the spotlight. Uh, this isn't the first time there's been activism in this city. But beyond that, Minneapolis is a city that has tried to do a lot of things. They've passed a lot of reforms. They have mm -hmm. a black police chief who many people consider to be a great reformer, really, he's a really nice guy. Um, they elected a wave yeah. of progressive leaders here and in St. Paul. And yet, these shootings keep continuing and these deaths keep continuing. And so Minneapolis yeah. is kind of a case study of does it need to be bigger and more sweeping change or will small reforms but Wesley, answer the question? And what the activists would say right now is it needs to be more. Wesley, I hope you can answer, in a, answer this question quickly because you were on a team that created a nationwide police database of police officers. Mm -hmm. what, was, what are you hoping, why did you do that? And how is it being used? Maybe just answer how it's being used, since we're short on time. Of course. So the Washington Post, me and my colleagues, we created a, a database of every fatal police shooting in the country. Uh, we can go on, if you Google search right now, Washington Post police shootings, you'll find every shooting since January 1st, 2015. 
The federal government doesn't track this data. Um, and so how do we have a conversation about how to have fewer police shootings if we don't even know how many there are, right? Everyone okay. wants to live in a world where the police yes. don't kill people, including the police. And we got in order to make that world, All right. we got to know how often it happens and analyze those cases. All right, Wesley Lowry, thank you so much for your time. Really looking forward to seeing your piece. I think you're a terrific reporter. Thank, thank you, you so much. much.